also the taxes and total receipt. Close out of that. And then we'll create this receipt. Looks like it went through properly. Gave us a receipt number up there in the upper left hand corner. And let's take a look at the actual receipt document as it would look as printed to uh, either a file or paper. So here's all the information that we entered in. All the important details on a receipt like this. Okay, so let's navigate over to the report center within eChain now. Into the inventory reports and pick up the transaction register report from the list. I'll enter the proper warehouse information, the from date, also the to date, and we can select what type of transaction we're looking for, and the item name. So keep following our 5 millimeter steel plate here through the process, and this is the report that it generates once we go ahead and select it. As you can see, converted quantity, we've got five, transaction amount there, 110. So you can see this uh, transaction actually did take place in the system as we processed earlier. Okay, so let's go into the miscellaneous receipts. Enter in a receipt. We can type in a quick description. Any comments that we might have can go here in this field. Transporter name and vehicle number can all be populated and tracked here. And then we'll also type in the item number, item description, of course, uh, revision number if there is one and what type of inventory, in this case of finished goods, and the quantity we're receiving. Just receiving four here today. We can go in and enter in the cost per, 15. The lot number as well. quantity from that lot. We got to make sure we enter the serial details there. Got a little warning notice from the system. So it's uh, serial numbers 10 to 13. There's a total quantity of four items. We'll go ahead and save this. You can see there we a receipt number generated through the system, which I can then copy out check my quantity on hand here once I enter in the item that I'm looking for I can go ahead and pull up a report and view the report by lot and serial number and I can actually just go ahead and see those four items that I received down there on the second line so just a way to confirm what I just did okay so we'll close out of that and go back into the reports center in the inventory reports and we'll have a look at <coughs> excuse me, a stock valuation report today. We'll just populate the warehouse details again, the item name, date that it's from, and we can select. So here's a stock valuation report. As you can see, that bottom line there, those four receipts that I just did on the miscellaneous receipt. See the stock amount. You 
any total amounts there as well. Okay, so back to the inventory tab. Do an inquiry item cost search. We can pick up our cost type, enter in our item name and description there. Defaults in once we enter the item name. And then I can actually select from this list here. You can see the cost method is actual cost in this case. Okay, so let's go into the sales order return screen. Select the customer name and the item name. You can see the order numbers here. We'll select the appropriate order. Click on receive. I'll have to go in and populate the description. Sales order returns. I want to pick up the sub inventory category of finished goods. And the number that were rejected. And we can go into the tax information here. And I want to make sure that uh, we've got the proper tax details and uh, freight details, things of that nature. And we're doing this return. So the system's giving me a warning here that we need to enter in some additional information. We'll go ahead and do that. Make sure we've got the proper currency, Indian rupees, uh, the conversion rate, all that information before we save. Okay, so that time it went through just fine. Now let's go to the lot and serial number details. Enter in the lot number. And the quantity from that lot, uh, a range of serial numbers can be entered. In this case, it's just one. And then we'll go ahead and create this within the system. So we got a trans transaction successful notification. And we've also got the option of creating a replacement order when we do a return like this. Uh, to make sure that we've got proper goods, even though one was returned. So there you go. You can see the replacement order. I can go ahead and click on that. And it's going to populate all of the appropriate information automatically through eChain. That way we, we can quickly process the uh, replacement order. Let's go back to the inventory and do a transaction summary search. Make sure I populate my dates again in my warehouse. Select the type of transaction that I'm looking for. Here you can see a transaction summary. Click on the details. You can see the amount, the unit cost. So let's take a look at the shop floor order item transaction report we want to look for an unallocation transaction we'll click on the details check this line item unallocate a couple items from it pick up the sub inventory category that those items are in can also select the lot and serial number that we want to unallocate from. Let's go ahead and put raw materials rather than finished goods here. And we'll try that again.